Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and this is Demos with Angular. Today we're going to be looking at how do we set up a Chromebook, a simple laptop like this, for development. I personally really like Chromebooks and Chrome OS devices because they start up really fast and they're really easy to use and keep up to date. Uh, when you combine that with the ability to do development or web development using something like VS Code, this becomes a really powerful laptop and unlocks a lot of different potential for you. So I'm going to start with a Chromebook that has been completely reformatted to the base state. So this is what you would get if you just purchased a new Chromebook kind of anywhere from any sort of different store. Chromebooks range anywhere from a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars, depending on how much power you want. Most of them are very, very cheap and very inexpensive. Now, I want to make sure that this Chromebook is up to date. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a Wi-Fi network here. And this is just a normal standard Chromebook setup process. Um, although we're going to be undoing this work in a couple moments, uh, this just ensures that the Chromebook is uh, working on a stable state uh, as well as has any updates that might be coming uh, to the Chrome OS platform or the firmware. Now I'm actually going to skip sign in entirely and go directly into guest mode and then just validate that everything's working with the Chromebook. And then we're going to go ahead and hit three keys on the keyboard. We're going to hit escape, refresh, and power. And what this is going to do is this is going to reboot the device into developer mode. Now it's going to come up with a little bit of a scary error message first, saying that the OS is missing or damaged. And I'm going to get past this just by hitting control D on the keyboard. And what that will do is then it will ask me for final verification that I want to clear all the data on the computer. So this will actually go through and erase the entire memory of the device uh, and then set it up to be developer mode. What's actually happening under the hood here is that uh, it's turning off the normal signing that happens from the device where it's verifying that all the software comes from Google, from the Chrome team, uh, and allowing me to install whatever sort of software I want on here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that developer mode and a tool called Crouton in order to get Linux running on this device uh, as a subsystem on top of the same kernel. So now the device has rebooted. We're going to go ahead and set it up just like a normal Chromebook. So I've sped up this process in the video a little bit. Um, depending on the size of the hard drive that you're using, this process can take anywhere from five to 10 minutes or uh, a little bit longer if you have a newer Chromebook with a much larger device. So again, it's going to go through the standard setup process. Uh, and I'm not going to skip anything this time. I want to actually set this up as if this was my real development device so that we get the best of both worlds, both the Chrome OS capabilities coming from the device with all of the syncing and passwords and capabilities that come from the standard device. And then we'll go ahead and set up the subsystems on top of that. All right, so this is now a standard normal Chromebook in developer mode. So developer mode uh, is not going to really do anything until I open a terminal and start playing around with this. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to open the search tab. And from there, I'm going to search for a project called Crouton. So Crouton is the name of the software uh, that can actually run Linux uh, operating systems within the existing kernel that comes with the Chromebook. So if you search for Crouton uh, Chrome OS, it should be the top result. Um, and there's going to be a few things that we're going to use from this page. So it's, it's got a lot of helpful guides that can show you kind of what's going on under the hood. But first, we're going to want to go ahead and download the software from the top. So this will download a single file called Crouton into our downloads folder. And then we're going to hit Control-Alt-T, which will get us into a terminal window. Uh, and then we're always going to hit Shell, or we're going to type Shell after we open that terminal window. And that will get us this Kronos at localhost. Um, we can see here that Crouton actually supports a number of different distributions. Uh, so I'm going to install uh, Bionic, which is the latest Ubuntu release. Uh, it's got an exclamation point, uh, or a star, excuse me, because it's unsupported, but I found that it works just fine. So I'm going to run sudo sh crouton, and when I say the type of install I want is a, a shiwi, or xiwi, uh, which will give me some windowing, and then I'm going to tell it I want uh, Bionic as the version of Ubuntu. It is now going to go ahead and install that operating system in the background. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and download a couple of the things I'm going to need. So the first thing up is going to be Visual Studio Code. Um, and because this is a Linux subsystem, we're going to be 
downloading it, the .deb file, um, which will allow us to install and run VS Code for Linux using the Ubuntu subsystem that we have. So the other thing that you might want to set up while we're looking here is the Crouton extension. So this is a Chrome OS uh, browser extension that integrates with that Shiwi uh, X window forwarding environment that we talked about before. So when VS Code is running in the background, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to want to attach to the screen and we're going to do that with this extension. Um, because this install is actually doing a ton of work, so it's setting up an entire operating system on top of the kernel that we've got running, uh, this can take a little while. Uh, as soon as it's set up, though, what we should see is that our environment is working, and we should see that it is asking us for the username and password that we want to set up the device with. So uh, as soon as that comes up, I'm going to enter my standard username uh, and pick a password for it. And here we are. Now we are dumped into uh, terminal again, and now I can run sudo enter chroot, which will jump me fully into that Linux distribution. So uh, as I said, this is a full Ubuntu uh, operating system running, so I can use uh, apt to install any of the software I want, htop, ssh, git, and a little bit later we'll install curl as well. All right, all of those packages are now set up. So let's go ahead and use dpkg to install the Visual Studio Code deb that we downloaded here. So uh, the install actually did work, even though it says there was an error. We just need to go ahead and install the dependencies with sudo apt install f, which will go ahead and then install all the dependencies for this package. Uh, in a couple other tabs here, I'm going to open up a couple of the other things that we're going to want to download and install to our environment. The first is NVM or Node Version Manager. This is how we're going to uh, install and manage our version of Node. So this one does support wget or curl. So you just run the command that they give you online and that installs NVM into your terminal. We'll actually need to sign out and sign back in before we can use NVM uh, to install Node, but we'll do that in a little bit. And then let's go ahead and install yarn. Uh, so I always go directly to the alternative section uh, where they give you a single curl command in order to install yarn into your environment. Um, so before I can do this, I'll need to install curl. So we'll just install that with sudo apt install curl. And then I can go ahead and run that command. And now the install will partially work, but it won't actually completely work here because we haven't set up our node environment yet. Um, so we need to go back, we need to exit the terminal here, uh, re-sign in or get a, a new shell, a new fresh shell where Node is uh, working. And then we're going to use NVM to install a version of Node. And right now the kind of latest, freshest version of Node is version 9. So I'm going to use NVM under the hood here and run uh, NVM install uh, 9 to give me the latest version of Node. The nice thing about NVM is that you can actually install multiple versions of Node, um, but I never really use that. I always just try to use the latest version. Um, and the nice thing is you don't need sudo to do any of these commands. So you're never gonna run sudo npm or sudo yarn ever. Uh, so it keeps everything nice and safe in user land. All right, now that I have Node and Yarn installed, we're going to go ahead and pull up a GitHub repository. So we'll just pull up this uh, Fluent.io repo, and I should be able to run git clone with that repo. Uh, and everything should just work because we are operating in this Linux environment. So the files have now been downloaded into this folder, Fluent.io. Uh, 
I can now run yarn to resolve all the dependencies. Uh, and then I'll open one more terminal so that I can uh, actually go ahead and run uh, ng-serve at the same time as doing other things. Uh, you'll note anytime I want to get a new terminal directly in the subsystem, I hit Control T to open a terminal, type shell, and then sudo enter chroot. So now that we've got yarn, I'm going to globally install the Angular CLI. And then I'm going to use that Angular CLI so that ng-serve works. Uh, so you'll see now, now that we've got ng-serve running, if I go to localhost 4200, the site works perfectly. So we have a local Angular uh, dev server up and running. The site works just fine. Everything loads, all the content comes through, all the program runs. Uh, and then the last thing that we want to do is to actually get Visual Studio Code running. So I'm, I'm actually going to install this libgtk uh, i386 version of the library just because uh, for some reason, it was missing the 32-bit uh, version of that dependency. Uh, normally, Visual Studio Code is 64-bit. Uh, um, I was a little bit confused by this, so I went and re-downloaded it. But or I was thinking about re-downloading it, but this actually worked. Ended up working just fine. And now I'm going to run Shiwi Code. And what this does is this uh, runs VS Code with this X windowing forwarding system. And then I click on the crouton extension. Uh, and now we're actually gonna get Visual Studio Code up and running. So you see down there, we've got the crouton logo and now we have Visual Studio Code. I can actually open the folder, the phone.io git folder that I just cloned. We can see all the source code here. And now if I go in and I make a change to any of that code, such as changing the uh, title of the page here to hello world, uh, the Angular dev server is going to see that change, make the change, and refresh the page. You saw it flash there before the programmatic Hello World came through. And so we now have a complete Angular development environment set up on a Chromebook in about 10 minutes. Thanks so much for watching.